stand clear. 100% Wild Podcast. So for all you listeners, hello and welcome to Definitely Not Your Favorite Outdoor Podcast. Welcome back, everybody, to the Drury Outdoors 100% Wild Podcast. It's a special rut series that we're doing. It's called Just the Tip. Heck yeah. You're Tim Shelsvick. <laughs> and you are Matt Drury. We got your old man. It's Terry Drury, what's up? How we doing, guys? We're doing great. All right. This is the final installment in a six episode run mm -hmm. of this Just the Tip rut series. And we're taking questions that were asked by the viewers and listeners in the Rack Pack and you're going to answer them for us. So we've covered some great topics so far. We've decoyed, uh, moon, rut, uh, calling, trying to think some uh, hunting the timber and the timber. Mm -hmm. So we've we've covered some great topics so far. And this one uh, should air, I would say, basically towards the end of what would be considered the rut. Right. It should be around the uh, yeah. 11th, I think, 10th or 11th, maybe um of of november so and just to give you context terry as we dive into some of the first questions here all right so i will say that uh as long as we continue doing these we're not out there hunting we need to finish and wrap these up so we can get the woods okay uh, i got plans to be in a stand tonight i don't <laughs> <laughs> i'll be driving to terry's however so soon. getting ready for the youth hunt that's right okay the cam, the cam. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited to uh to hear about his weekend experience. Okay, so our first set of questions comes from Cold Steel. Uh professional blades for real hunters. Get the click and cut hunting kit and have every blade you need for your next processing job in one handy case. That's the kit that I use. <laughs> Do you use it? Uh, I've gotten it dirty once this uh this season so far. Okay. Sharpen it back up, put it back in the truck. Okay, so Punky Bye. Stevenson is wanting to know. He says, well, that's his real name. Well, it has to be. <laughs> Does it? And put it down on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> While hunting the rut, will my chances increase or decrease hunting from a saddle compared to a traditional setup? Oh, we have an expert, Terry. Mm. <laughs> Take it <laughs> away, Terry Drury. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm not a saddle hunter, I thought I'd throw this one back at Tim because I know he's an experienced saddle guy. So I'm going to let you feel that one. Giddy boy, up. boy you, you go on some of these forums and suddenly you realize uh, there are guys that are way more devoted to saddle hunting than I am. I hunt out of it maybe 25, 30 percent of the time. But the, the, the upside to saddle hunting, I will say during the rut, is the sheer flexibility you get in a lot of saddle setups you almost have 360 degree coverage around a tree. So, you know, we always talk about the wild card effect during the rut that you just never know when or where a buck is going to approach from. Well, saddle really gives you a lot of flexibility to move in ways that you can't in a traditional hang on or a uh, ladder stand. So just from that aspect alone, I, I would say I would prefer to be in a saddle. Also, you can, it's a little faster to tear down and go set up if you need to be 40 yards that way. And, you know, if you see movement on a trail or something, so just a little more flexibility while you're in the tree and where you're set up. So I, I would go with the saddle set up if you can. I could see that being a, a great advantage to the hunter because, you know, with our setups <clears throat> two you know, there's two guys, you self film a lot. Mm -hmm. So saddle hunting works, but you know, I always have Scott with me. Terry always has forest with them. It's just not really, it's not, you know, we like to have our setups ahead of time and, you know, camera arms and yeah. all this kind of stuff. It's all set and ready. Yeah. Now, now there is kind of a, a middle ground. There is a, a lot of places I will go and throw up some sticks and all I've got to do is go up the tree and, and get in. It's almost like having a uh, a lock on stand there. So, handy. so it, it makes a lot less noise. I still like the, the, the part I struggle with with saddle hunting during the setup is still just bringing everything up with me, including my camera gear or hauling it up and just don't have a great system for that. But luckily you work out. That's right. Can you tell? <clears throat> no, but I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> Word on the street. <laughs> Punky, I hope that helps you out, man. But I, I will say, like, you don't want to be experimenting with your saddle during the rut. You want to be <laughs> proficient with it and understand how it works and get comfortable with it. I'd be so tangled up. It wouldn't even be funny. You'd be It'd be funny to somebody. <laughs> it wouldn't be funny to me. <laughs> There's no doubt you would be tangled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Giddy up. Okay. And then Steve Bruni, he's, uh, he, he asks, if your cameras are lighting up, 
and it's November 8th and you have the perfect win and your wife or boss tells you, if you go, don't bother coming back. Would you hunt with a crossbow or a vertical bow? I think just to (laughs) speed things up, I would use the crossbow and try and get back there as quickly as possible just to find that your stuff is out in the driveway Uh and you no longer have a job. You can start looking for a new job and I will speed the entire process up. So I'd go crossbow. It's like that Brad Paisley song. I'm going to miss her. (laughs) Yeah. I, I wish I had it in front of me, but at the beginning of the season, Aaron Bennett sent a text. I think it was to possibly Scott and I, and it, and it and it was the very first day of the season. He said something like, "The season of discontent." <laughs> is here. Like everybody's marriage is just. Are you goes, going hunting again this weekend? Yeah, yeah. I don't care how many honeydew lists you complete and how many chips you save. It doesn't matter when you get to this part of the season. You, and you could have not hunted yet until this part of the season. They still don't. Get it. <laughs> they still don't understand that I, you're going to be gone the entire week. I really try to make it a point to tell my wife when I'm not going hunting. <laughs> Weather's great, but I'm not going. Honey, yeah, yeah. For I'll, you, I'll, I'll not be for home. Me. Hope you're keeping track. Yeah. So Terry says crossbow to get it done quickly. Yeah. Can't disagree with that. Maybe salvage your job and or relationship. Yeah. Smart. Hopefully you have a cool boss. Then no. Nope. Don't. I wouldn't worry about work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That home life's a different situation. <laughs> yeah. You, there's no other place to go. <laughs> work work you can sit well, there <laughs> yeah don't work piss the boss off my life because you may have to live there <laughs> all right let's dive into the next one next question is brought to you by hunter specialties from sync control solutions to the dod signature line of deer calls hunter specialties has all the hunting accessories you need i'm sure by the time this airs Plenty of people have used plenty of Colin <laughs> up to this point in the season. It is. You made a good point. I don't I, maybe episode three about how sometimes we just look for something to do when we're in the stand. 100%. And so that leads to sometimes some over calling, yeah. over rattling. Yeah. And I'm just going to call a little. <laughs> do, <laughs> see what's do. Something. See what we, well, we want to do something proactive. <laughs> Turns out you're just screwing your place up. All right. So. I wonder, I'm going to ask these at separate times here. There's two questions. So the first one is what are the fact, this is from Joey Mitch. What are the factors in your dream rut hunt? The things you daydream about in July are, I would like to add to that in November when you're sitting there and nothing's September, happening. October. <laughs> well, th- this one's pretty easy. I'm in a muddy lock on a tree stand. I got a Matthews bow hanging up. It's uh, somewhere between, 15 and 20 degrees, you know, really, really cold, frosty morning. I got a south or southwest wind at eight to 10 mile an hour. The thermals are flying up, going straight up. Mm -hmm. You can literally get by with murder. You don't have to worry too much about scent. And you got this and you're on top of a ridge. So a wooded ridge where you got acorns all around you. And you got this big old giant buck kind of has his head down. He's, He's sniffing. He's eating acorns while he's coming in, but he's still looking. Kind of just described the scenario you had, Matt, a few years ago. Yeah, gnarly, no doubt. That would be my ideal situation. He stops at 15 yards and you zip his ass. He <laughs> runs 60 yards and he's dead as a hammer. Yeah. So there you go. That is, you did just, ex- I was thinking about that. It's like, uh, yeah, I actually had my dream scenario play out and you it's, drop, drop an arrow. <laughs> <laughs> you're bows on the ground maybe you decide pull to get it up, down early you drop an arrow you <laughs> re-knock and here comes the buck right in front of you it's seven just steps just like we planned it just like we planned <laughs> i think the dropping of the arrow actually was in my favor i think so oddly enough i yeah, i agree you, uh, you know in that scenario because there is a little frost on the ground that takes a little while for the earth to warm up the woods come to life i say so i i always enjoy that period if you go in in the dark and everything starts to wake up it's a it's a whole experience in itself when when things start to wake up on a cold frosty morning like that. Why the southerly wind versus the northerly? Just because it's the north and that with that temperature that you described is so damn yeah. cold. <laughs> Chances are you just had a wind switch. You know, go from northerlies into a southerly, even though it's still you still got pretty cool temperatures. You know, yeah, It'd be nice to catch that that wind switch. We had one here this morning. We've been south for I don't know how long, and all of a sudden we had a nar that just came blowing in this morning at 8 8 a.m and it was it was uh it was neat to feel it to feel it actually hit us this morning one thing that surprises me that you omitted from your scenario there terry it was any mention of breakfast 
Yeah, I'm I'm not a, a big breakfast guy. What? Really? Bullshit. Every Until, time we ever yeah. have hunted in my entire life, we have to get out early for you to get breakfast and forced no, to sit behind the scenes there somewhere thinking, well, why am I cooking so much? <laughs> You can ask Forrest. We're not big breakfast guys unless you're in camp. You and Yapper. Forrest, are you back there somewhere? He's right here laughing. He's cooking breakfast. <laughs> He's over there in the kitchen cooking. He's got an apron on. He's flipping eggs. <laughs> I'll be back. I got to wipe the egg off my face. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Literally. <laughs> All right. Uh, next question here for you. Paul Serrata, <laughs> what is your main factor you look at in deer cast when picking your times to hunt during the rut? He, I think he had, is that from Paul? Yes. Yeah. I think he had, uh, he had spelled out two or three of those. Did he not Matt wind and all I got in this question in my, the piece of paper I'm looking at in front of me <laughs> that Tim provided. me. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I summarized it a little ah, bit. Ah, Tim screwed me again but it's it no, kind of gives you free Paul, license and i'm i'm not sure i'm pronouncing his last name correctly but is it sarita or sarita he, he had asked and in his question i think he had stated you know wind and barometer and temperature and all those different things and and when i read it i thought it was a great question because it summarized deercast it summarized the algorithm you know we've got 13 different influencers that are within the algorithm the ones that he asked about are referenced all are in that that algorithm, you know, whether it's barometer, whether it's departure from average temperature, whether it's wind speed, whether it's moon, you know, we have so many different influencers in there. But when Paul asked it, I thought I thought it was a good question to kind of summarize this whole entire series and talk about how influential DeerCast is and how buttoned up we have it with with every one of the phases and every one of the influencers. They're all weighted differently for each and every phase that we go through. And we feel like we've got it as close as we can possibly get it. You know, we're always tweaking, trying to prove it wrong. Forrest and I have sat on days that it says poor and days that it says bad. And we go, damn, it's right again. You know, so uh, and the days that it says great, I can't wait until we get some greens coming up here. Uh, I think when Cam comes up during youth season, we got two days of some greats and goods. So we'll be fired up for those to finally hit. But I thought I thought I wanted to thank Paul for that question and all the all the uh, rack packers. They they had some really, really great questions. I wish we could answer every single one of them because they were all extremely well thought out. Well, I want to circle back and hone in on this. You didn't really answer. What is your main factor you look at? Well, there wasn't one. And I guess I should have stated that there wasn't one because we've got so many barometers, a big one. Mm -hmm. Temperature is another one. So those two alone will help you. But because the algorithm includes all 13, if you just follow that algorithm and you follow that movement predictor, it's usually just spot on. So that's that's kind of the answer. Uh, there's 13 of them that I like, but there's a couple, you know, moon is big, but temperature is good. Barometer is good. So there's two or three of them you could key in on a little bit. The, definitely the barometer. When I look at it I'm, and, and I like to go to the hourly and look at the charts, I'm definitely honing in on pressure, temperature at that average temperature. Yeah. And uh, cloud cover, I feel like in my limited experience, I feel like cloud cover has a bigger part to play for whatever reason than, yeah, than, uh, than some of the other things that we talk about. So those are the things I'm, I'm diving into. I do want to say typically the last several years during the rut, the deer cast prediction has been not, not giving us great, like it'd, it'd be like a, okay a little pessimistic. A, because it's a little pessimistic because the weather has sucked for the most part yeah. and this is and people get really upset about that it's like it's the what rut they're going to be moving no matter what and and there is something to that for sure and so we're going off of weather variables but the phases are also weighted uh, based on what what the phase of the the season is so mm-hmm. It does account for that for the most part. This is the first time I can remember in a long time where deer cast is like peaking green, the the biggest bars of green in the hourly that I've ever seen it for the rut. I can't remember it being quite this peaked out. Um, and if you really dive into it, the areas that we're hunting, that the pressure is through the roof. The moon conditions are right. The weather's right. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot that's that's lining up in, in those factors. Wouldn't you say, Terry? A- absolutely. Absolutely. And conversely, I don't ever remember it being so poor 
for so long. Jeez. Yeah. And it's been, it's been dreadful. I mean, Forrest and I hunt every single day and it has been absolutely off the charts, poor, and, and it just sucked, mm-hmm. but it's been, a, it's been weather related and it's been a terrible barometer. The pressure has been as low as I've seen it on some of these days. Now, one of the things that we, we did, have, haven't talked about, even though we may have a low pressure in the algorithm, we catch that dip, that inflection point. So it may hit a it may hit a low number throughout the day and then start rising back up slow as it may. Mm -hmm. But we still hit that inflection point within the algorithm. So that barometer, even if it's low, but it's on the rise, that's still a a positive. That's still a plus. Well, with and that obviously is affected a little bit differently and it's weighted differently throughout the season. You know, when when you hit that inflection point, it doesn't have the same weighting in phase two that it does in phase five, that it does in phase 13. Mm -hmm. So all of those are weighted differently. But uh, all of those factors that are within the algorithm that you you even mentioned, Matt, departure from average temperature, damn, when it's 10 degrees below average, it's a lot different than 10 degrees above average. We've seen, we've been sitting here 20 degrees above average temperature of late, and it's just awful with a with a barometer that's in the basement. So, and, and Deer Cast reflects that. It says, poor, bad, don't go, dumbass. That's, <laughs> that's what it's saying. And we went anyway. We well, try to prove it wrong every day. Yeah, and and it's usually pretty doggone accurate. We've been sitting it out a lot and it's just like, man, it's going to get so great. Do we all, do, do you also want to go in and go skunk up your spots and, you know, <laughs> it, not necessarily kind of want to save them. So I don't know, Aaron Bennett, had, and we're filming this ahead of when it airs. So we're filming this, it's October 27th. So, you know, 10 days before it, it, it aired, but Aaron sent me a text. He's like, Hey, what are your cameras been like? Mine last night, I had, you know, 10, 15 cameras out and I got like zero pictures across all dead. of them. It's like, yeah, yeah that's it's dead. It's, it <clears throat> was 66 degrees when I woke up this morning and the pressure sucked. So mm-hmm. yeah, they're not moving. <laughs> it's not great. <laughs> They have not moved. They have not. And I and I said it uh, a few episodes ago that I think this will be a light switch event. I think we're going to see some movement that's off the chart because we haven't seen these greats in a while. You know, they're much like we are when they, they feel good, when the temperature is a little lower and the pressure's on the rise, you're going to see some activity. Yep. You know, wind speeds will be good. So I, I think and, and Matt, to your point about cloud cover, we were sitting in a stand last night. And a big band of really dark, ugly clouds come rolling in. And it just, uh, there was zero wind and the, the barometer was in the basement. It just sucked. It was awful. And, uh, I, you know, you sit those days and you go, well, no wonder they're not moving. It feels like it just feels terrible here. Well, the- so, you know, the, you you cannot get those good days often enough. But I don't recall a stretch like we've had where it's been this poor. So I, I predict this stretch that's upcoming should be off the charts. I, I look forward to us yeah. circling back and yeah. kind of deconstructing what, what just happened during the rut. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think we need to wrap up this episode. Anything in closing for, for either of you guys? Well, if, if I'm if I'm wrong, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll just, de- deconstruct it without you. <laughs> there you go. Which, yeah, if you're not in the room, Terry, well, Terry, made, so well. Terry made some bad predictions. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, hey, we hope this rut series has really helped you. Like, that's what we're here to do. And so if you want to drop us some feedback, let us know. Make sure you rate the show. You subscribe if you haven't also. Um, that tracker giveaway is still going live in DeerCast. And uh, not a whole lot of people have signed up for it. So your odds oh, are really wow. really good we haven't promoted it very well <laughs> yeah so it's go not- into DeerCast, hit that giveaway tab make sure you sign up if you've already signed up uh, it won't let you sign up again but make sure you're signed up in there because we'll draw that uh here in uh, at the end of december and yes we do give them away so. <laughs> it's not a fake and those trackers are badass they yeah. are really really well built those are a good machine so whoever wins one is going to be really happy with it absolutely right, yeah all right yeah. well terry anything in closing no, I want everybody to be safe. Make sure that's first and foremost, you know, during the firearm season, make sure you got your hunter orange prevalent wherever and visible where everybody can see it. If you're hanging from a tree stand, make sure you got safe lines in and you're wearing that harness. Make sure your lanyard off, carabiner in. All right. Squeeze check one. Good advice. All right, guys. I hope uh, you all enjoyed this rut series called Just the Tip, Tim's idea. Uh, and hopefully we get some pictures of you guys and gals behind a big old buck in the rack pack. Yes. Load them up. All right. Yeah, Happy absolutely. Night. Several of those names. We'd love to see a smiling face behind a big deer. That's I right. would love for them to respond and, and send pictures in. All right. Happy hunting till next time. See you guys. Peace out. Bye.
DeerCast is now supercharged with maps. Get ahead of your game with killer new features like live Doppler radar, wind check out to five days, virtual rain gauges, GPS path tracking, and more. Plus, get our 14-day revolutionary DeerCast prediction and access to DeerCast track. Prep, predict, and pursue with DeerCast. We're adding new videos every week, so make sure to click that subscribe button and check out all of our amazing content. This episode of DoD TV is brought to you by DeerCast. Prep, predict, and pursue your target buck.